Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third webinar in the Alma 2021 Continuing Your Leadership Journey virtual program. My name is Thad Gurley, and uh, I will be moderating today's discussion on evaluating the digital infrastructure. Is your lab ready for the future? We like for our webinars to be interactive, so we urge you to submit your questions at any time during the webinar. Our speaker will address the questions at the conclusion of the webinar. Please use the QA icon on the bottom of your Zoom webinar browser to submit questions. We will try to answer as many questions as possible, but if we run out of time during this question and answer session, I will forward any unanswered questions to the presenter. The webinar is being recorded and the details will be posted on our website shortly following the webinar. I would especially like to thank our gold sponsor, Asterix, for sponsoring our third webinar. We have asked Rob Patterson, Vice President of Marketing and Inside Sales at Asterix, to say a few words. Welcome, Rob. Hey, thanks, Dad. Let me switch over to my screen here. So uh, thanks, everybody, for having us today. We're really excited about today's session and um, uh, taking part in, with Alma. We've been taking part with Alma for several years, and we're we you know great partnership, and we're uh, happy to be here today. So. For those of you that don't know, Asterix is an organization that's a science-based uh, or science-focused organization that helps helps science-based orgs uh, really focus on things like laboratory informatics, digital quality and compliance, and uh, staffing. Uh, we're close to a thousand employees uh, across uh, multiple countries that are work with some of the largest as well as some of the most uh, uh, our fastest emerging pharmaceutical and life sciences companies tackle some of their uh, toughest challenges. So how we do this is through our, our approach of laboratory informatics services, digital quality and compliance services. We actually have a staffing division that handles both scientific staffing. So if you need lab staff or you need technology staff in the lab, uh, we can place those folks, but we also do the same for public sector and the federal government here in the US. We've been around uh, about 25 years. We were founded by science uh, by scientists. So, and we're still that we still have that focus today. We um, we understand the unique challenges that science-based works face, and what we do is we try to apply uh, technologies and processes in, in an agnostic way. So we don't have a very specific um, uh, technology that we go to or a process that we go to. We remain flexible because every organization faces different challenges. So. Our unique approach is that we are 100% science focused and we do so in a way that's agnostic from technologies and processes so we can meet the needs and unique needs of every organization. So Thad, we're really excited to be here today. If anybody wants to learn any more about Asterix, you can visit us at asterixinc.com, uh, but I will turn it back over to you to get the festivity started for today. All right, thanks Rob. Without Asterix sponsorship, we, have, we would be unable to provide our webinars to the Alma community free of charge. So with that, I would like to introduce our speaker today, Christy Bowden. Christy Bowden is a senior group leader and research scientist at, at Arkham Inc. There she manages analytical groups within Arkham's analytical and systems research department to deliver high quality analytical solutions to R&D and production. Prior to management, Christy spent 15 years in the laboratory utilizing gas chromatography, liquid chromatography, and mass spectrometry from small molecules and polymer additive method development and analysis. Christy has a BS degree in chemistry from DeSales University and an MS degree in chemistry from Drexel University. She is currently, she currently is the 2021 Association for Laboratory Managers President, was the 2017 Alma Program Chair, and has been actively involved with Alma for over five years. Christy is also a member of the American Chemical Society and the American Society for Mass Spectrometry. Christy, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Thad. I'm gonna share my screen. Hold on one second. Hello everyone, thank you for attending my webinar today. I'd also like to shout out to uh, Thad Gurley um, and Alma's program committee for allowing me to bring this content to you today. Uh, digital transformation is a buzzword that's kind of been around for many, many years now. And a lot of companies have gone through a lot of digital transformations in their organizations, which have thus trickled down into the laboratory and laboratory oper operations. So whether or not you're beginning your digital transformation journey, currently in digital transforming your laboratories, or if you've already done your digital transformation, it can be a very daunting, overwhelming, challenging task. So the motivation behind this presentation was to use my experience at Arkema and our digital transformation journey as a case study to share learnings, considerations, and insights with you. It's kind of the foundation of Alma. We like for lab managers to share stories with other lab managers so that we can share learnings with each other. So thanks again for your attendance. The agenda for my talk today will be first to introduce Arkham Inc. to you so you understand the company that I work for. 
then discuss what actually is digital transformation because it can have many different um, definitions depending upon the context in which you're working. And talk about advantages of digital transformation, why you should digitally transform your lab. And then talk about the steps that are needed in order to do the digital transformation. And then I will get into the case study of my organization to see what we have done in analytical and systems research so that you can see what we have done for digitally transforming our, our laboratories. And then discuss some learnings and considerations from our journey. So I work for Arkham Incorporated. We are a French global specialty materials company. Our global headquarters is located in Cologne, France. And our vision is to be a global leader in specialty materials, offering the most innovative and sustainable solutions to meet our customers' needs today and tomorrow. Our organization is broken up into three key business segments, adhesive solutions, advanced materials, and coding solutions where each business unit is addressing the challenges of an ever-changing world. In our adhesive solutions business unit, we are trying to deal with give, providing materials and products to deal with population growth and urbanization, as well as to make materials more energy efficient and more insulating, and also make them lightweight and make substitutions for mechanical assembly. For our advanced materials business unit, we are developing renewable energy solutions for solar, wind, and others. We're also making materials more lightweight for transportation so we can reduce energy consumption and CO2 emissions and provide better access to drinking water with new membrane technologies for filtration, as well as making materials recyclable and bio-based for sustainability and also making materials for 3D printing. And lastly, our coding solutions business unit is shifting to make more environmentally friendly and low VOC emission solutions for latexes and paints as well as to meet increasing demand for high performance coatings. Since we are a global company, we're located all throughout the world. We have over 20,000 employees and you can see the distribution of the breakdown in the upper left-hand corner. We also have many customers that we collaborate with and many leading brands that you've heard of. And in 2020, despite the pandemic, we hired over a thousand new employees. So we're very proud of that. We have a presence in over 55 countries with 147 manufacturing facilities and 15 R&D centers. And I'm lucky enough to work at the King of Prussia headquarters for North America, sorry, located in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, our North American R&D headquarters. Okay, so now that I've introduced you to the organization I work for, I'd like to start off with a little bit of a poll question. So Jill, if we can start that poll. How familiar are you with digital transformation? Digital what? You have absolutely no idea. You're somewhat familiar familiar enough, or you're a complete expert. So just take a time, take some time to answer these questions so we can see where everybody is. Maybe we can close the poll and see the results. Digital what? Okay, so we have about 27% are not familiar with digital transformation. So you've come to the right place, so thank you. Um, some are somewhat familiar and some are familiar enough. So it's a good distribution. Thank you for answering. Okay, so what is digital transformation? I do have one disclaimer. I'm not a digital transformation expert. I am an analytical scientist, so I am not a DT expert. Um, but let's, let's go into the chat. And when you think of digital transformation, I'd like to see what you think of, put chat in some words of what you think of when you think of digital transformation. What does it mean to you? And what are some words that come to mind when you think of digital transformation? So we have automation. I'm looking for everyone to participate here, trying to see what everybody thinks of when they think of digital transformation. A fully digital laboratory, big data, automated processes, lab informatics, very good. Remote operation, great. Communications, paperless lab, robotics. Yeah, these are all great, no paper. Yeah, really. <laughs> Limbs, data management, machine learning, great. Zoom and security. Okay, wonderful. So as we've seen from the chat, 
digital transformation can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So it's important for us to kind of establish a baseline or a foundation for this presentation so we can understand um, what it is that I will be talking about. And it can also change depending upon the context of the environment that you're working in. So let's just address the digital spectrum of, of buzzwords. So first, digitization. So these are some topics that I'm gonna be using and talking about during my presentation. So digitization, what is that? It's the process of converting something non-digital into a digital representation or artifact. So imagine we're doing, a, we're doing an experiment in a laboratory notebook, a paper laboratory notebook. Digitization would be converting that process to using an electronic lab notebook. Digitalization would be enabling or improving processes or leveraging digital technologies and digitized data. So let's say, for example, you are doing calculations in Excel. Well, one part of digitalization might be to use your chromatography data system in order to do those processes automatically and to do those calculations for you automatically. Digital transformation, that is the integration of digital technology into all areas of the business, fundamentally changing how you operate and deliver value to your customers. Now you can think it macroscopically as far as the whole entire organization, or you can whittle it down to digital transformation of just your laboratory and your laboratory operations. And then digital enablement, the process of realizing the digital transformation of an organization through various digital tools. So how are you going to create an environment to ensure a successful digital transformation in your organization? So advantages of digitally transforming your lab. I think I might put this slide back on. Okay. So you hear about digital transformation, but what are some advantages that you can actually realize from this? Well, one of them is to generate the lab of the future. Whenever you hear about digital transformation, you're always hearing about how it will create the lab of the future, right? So what is it that you can actually gain from doing this? Well, first would be improved collaboration and sharing. Once you start to connect everything together, it's much easier to share data among people that you're working with locally, but then also people that you're working with globally. More access to data. If you're converting manual processes to digital uh, processes, you're able to capture more data faster, so you also have more access to data. Enhanced data integrity. What that means is you can make sure that your data is much more secure with digitized tools and digi digital, digital data as opposed to having things that were manual or paper centric. You can also increase productivity and efficiency. As you move to a more digital, digitized, digitally transformed laboratory, your processes and your workflows will improve, which will thus in turn result in improved productivity and efficiency. It will also improve the quality of your results. You will be able to re repeat experiments without any issue because you'll be able to have access to that experimental information right away. You'll also be able to do calculations much more better to ensure the reproducibility of your work and the accuracy of your work. And then this will also help foster increased innovations, right? Imagine you're collaborating and you're sharing a lot more now because everything is digital. That is going to in turn spark increased innovations and ideation with you and your customers um, and other scientists that you work with. It will also allow for faster and enhanced decision making because you have access to so much more data so much faster. You can review it and you can make better, more informed decisions based upon all of that information. And finally, we've all had to deal with the COVID pandemic. So a lot of us have not been in the laboratories as much as we would like to as a result. So digitizing a lab and digitally transforming your lab will allow you to adapt to a changing work environment where you might have some people that are starting to work from home. They can then tap into the laboratories and not have to be physically in the building in order to be able to access their data, access their instruments and access their lab. So in, in addition, why don't we hear from some people that have actually done digital transformation in the laboratories to see what they are saying about the advantages. You ask me why I'm doing this. It's because the world has no time. That is what Alain Asperu Guzik, a professor of chemistry and computer science at the University of Toronto has said. Now he is a researcher that is developing thin film membranes. And what he has done is been able to leverage um, artificial intelligence and machine learning to automate the synthesis and the evaluation of his materials to make a continuous loop that is constantly learning and, and improving in processing. So he can generate the next set of materials that can be used and evaluated um, and, and brought to market. 
the lab of the future won't be bound by walls. This was said by Brian Roberts, senior VP and global head of operations for Roche. Now this is in a biofarm space, but basically what he's saying is that due to connectivity and the increased connectivity as you're doing digital transformation, you're not bound by uh, working only with the people that are in the physical walls of the space that you inhabit. Right. And in addition, in a clinical setting, in a clinical setting where they're doing clinical research, wearables and smart technology can now also be leveraged to access data for people that are not even in the lab or in the physical setting. So now that we've discussed advantages of digital transformation, are you ready for the transformation? So last poll question, and Jill, get the poll question ready. Where are you, where's your laboratory on the DT digital transformation spectrum? You have not even considered DT yet. You've considered DT and have developed a plan. You're in the process of implementing DT or you have completely transformed your laboratory already. So let's give a few seconds to answer these questions because I'd like to see where everyone is. Right, Jill, maybe we can close the poll and see what the results are. Okay, so 45% of you have not even considered DT yet. 10% um, have considered and you've developed a plan. And then some of you are in the process of implementing it as well, about 45%. And just for a disclaimer, we are in the process of our digital transformation journey at Arkema. So uh, I'm, in the I'm in the majority with the rest of you. Thank you for your answers. Okay, so now that we've considered digital transformation and we actually wanna start working toward digitally transforming our lab, what are the steps that we would take in order to do that? Well, the first step would be to evaluate the current state of your laboratory. So what are your current processes? You really wanna map out everything that you're doing in the lab and what your workflows in your laboratories are. And then you want to start to understand the state of your infrastructure. So what does the IT space of your organization look like? Do you have a lot of support? Do you not have a lot of support? Do you have a good foundation? Can it be improved? Um, then you want to just figure out what are your bottlenecks. When you've mapped out your process, you want to see where are there are really some hurdles in our processes and where are there are really some places where we're having a lot of trouble. And then how much capital do you have to spend? Obviously, to do any infrastructure improvements or to do any hardware or software improvements, you're going to need money. So how much money do you actually have in order to do the digital transformation? So after you've evaluated your current state, the next thing you want to do is to define the needs of your laboratory. Is there a corporate strategy that you have to follow? Are there some mandates from higher up that are being pushed down to you that you have to implement? Where do you need to be on the digital spectrum? Are you a completely manual centric laboratory and you just wanna to shift to digitizing um, and getting away from manual? Or do you wanna go actually and fully digitally transform your, your laboratory? Are there any immediate needs? Are you facing any current issues that you need to immediately address? Uh, for, exa for example, you need to become more productive or you need to provide more turnaround time. Are there things that you can do for automation that will address those immediate needs? And then what will your lab look like in the future? Are you going to be acquiring a new organization? Or are you going to focus on certain types of analyses? Are you going to be buying a whole bunch of additional instrumentation? What, are, what is your laboratory going to look like in the future? And then what you want to do is perform a SWOT or a gap analysis to find out where the gaps are between where you currently are and where you need to be. And finally, you want to create a strategic plan. You want to identify what your goals are and develop teams and project timelines to help implement and work toward those changes. You wanna prioritize any items, especially if there's a corporate uh, strategy that you need to be in aligned with, and then determine a probability of success. You don't want to have high in the sky goals that are never gonna be able to be realized. You wanna be realistic about what you actually achieve. And one thing you might want to also see, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a book, um, Digital Transformation of the Laboratory, A Practical Guide to the Connected Lab. It's a great resource that you should look into. Okay, so now that we've talked about digital transformation and the steps to do it, I'd like to start to discuss my department, Analytical and Systems Research, so you can see what we've been doing um, in our organization. 
So to do that, I'd like to give you a little bit of an overview of our department and what we're like. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see two of our scientists, Dr. Gunter Moller and Dr. Pierre Riku, working um, on their instrumentation in the lab. So what type of laboratory are we? We are a core analytical department. We support all of R&D and technical service for North America. We have a lot of business units in, in, in Arkema, and we have a lot of different chemistries, so we're supporting all of that. We also perform manufacturing and process support where needed. And it's important to note that we're not a, a regulated lab because we support R&D. We're not compliant by FDA or ISO or any other standards. So we're not uh, in a lab, uh, regulated lab environment. The size of our department, we have about 20 uh, employees and they range from bachelor's degree chemists to PhD scientists. And our scientists are all technical experts in their field who are publishing, leading industrial organizations and collaborating with academia as needed. So then what do we provide to our researchers and to our organization? Well, we collaborate with our R&D scientists throughout North America and the globe to understand their technical challenges and then implement solutions to solve their problems. We do this by developing new analytical methodologies and new technologies. We also transfer methodologies to our plants for quality control. Then we also provide consulting. We provide solutions. We go to a lot of meetings to hear technical challenges and provide insight into approaches on how to solve a problem. Um, we also do experimental design for researchers in the lab to help get their design of experiments set up before they're in the lab doing things. Um, we can also perform statistical analysis on data, as well as provide computational modeling to get results without having to actually do experiments in the lab. We let the computers do the work. And then because we are collaborating with our scientists, we're also actively contributing to innovations in R&D. Our department is set up into four different groups. Our first is polymer sciences, where we're analyzing polymers in bulk using various techniques from gel permeation chromatography to different thermal analysis techniques to different rheometry techniques to understand viscoelastic properties of our materials. We have a materials and surface sciences group who is doing a lot of microscopy and analysis of the surface to see it and image it, but then also to look at the elemental distribution uh, of what is actually on the surface using XPS techniques and other x-ray techniques. And we also do elemental analysis to understand what elements are on the surface of our materials. We also do molecular characterization using various spectroscopy, chromatography, and mass spectrometry techniques to identify and quantify molecules in our materials. And we also have a systems research team that is doing molecular modeling um, with various computer simulations. And we also do experimental design and statistical analysis and data analysis too, to understand what our data means and to be able to make decisions um, from our data. So it's important to note that our department is very, very, very diverse. We have a lot of different instrumentation. We have a lot of different capabilities and we have a lot of technologies and a lot of instruments that are still manual based because of the nature of the technology. And then we have other laboratories which are completely computerized, right? Which aren't using any lab, uh, any lab instrumentation. So our lab is very, very diverse. So the first thing that we talked about in the steps for digitally, transform, digitally transforming your lab is to evaluate your current state, evaluate where you are. And that starts with identify, identifying your laboratory workflow. So for us, the first thing that we do is we work with our customers to understand their analysis objectives. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? And we do that by meeting, uh, meeting with them and, and having discussions with them face to face or via email. We will then research our approach. So we will search through our current uh, database of methodologies. Do we have a way to currently do this? Or do we need to go to literature and research an approach or a, a way to do this to solve the problem? We then will prepare for and, and perform the experiment. So what instrument am I gonna use? Is it available? Do I have the consumables that I need to do the analysis? Uh, do I need to purchase any chemicals? Do I have the chemicals in the inventory? And then we actually go into the laboratory, do the preparation, run the analyses uh, on the instruments. Then once the analysis is done, we will review the data um, and determine whether or not we can answer the initial question that we were trying to solve. And then if so, we will issue an analytical report that we, we will then share with our customer. So normally this will work perfectly with one try, but sometimes we will analyze our data and we will have to go back and do an experiment again because our analysis may not have answered the question or there may have been a problem with our analysis. Sometimes we will analyze the data and realize that our approach, our initial approach didn't work, so we need to research another approach. 
And sometimes we find out that the question that we thought we wanted to answer isn't the question that we needed to answer and that we have to re rethink of what the problem is and what the actual, yeah, what the problem we want to solve is. So when we look at the workflow, we want to kind of identify the current state of, of, of our laboratories. And we do that by identifying our data. What does our data environment look like in this kind of a workflow setting? So for us, we're a non-networked environment. Our instruments are not connected to a network. We have one computer running one instrument and that computer is only pulling data from one instrument, right? You need to be in the laboratory to run the instrument and you need to be in the laboratory to get the data. Our data is not easily shared. Because it's not networked, we have to physically go into the laboratory, get a stick and download the data and then do what we want to do with it. Manual, excuse me, manual capturing. Some of our laboratories are manually capturing data. They're not digital yet, so we're manually capturing it. And then manually retrieving the data. Like I said, we're using thumb drives to get that data to either get ready to do a presentation or to share with a colleague. Um, so we're not networked. We have to get it manually. The same with storage. We don't have automatic data backup. So we're manually uh, backing up our data every quarter, every month. And then also poor security, because we're not networked, we have paper that we need to make sure is you know, locked up at night. So we need to, to improve our uh, security. And as far as our processes, many of our processes are not standardized because we have a very diverse department. People are doing things many different ways. And some of our processes are still very manual. And our processes are not integrated. We have a lot of different tools that we're utilizing to do things. So we're opening one software platform to do one thing, opening another software platform to do another thing. One piece of software might be in the lab and I don't have access to it from my personal computer. Um, so they're not integrated. But to our advantage, we do have some digitized processes to some level. As far as our technology, our software and our hardware is somewhat outdated. We haven't been keeping up with the computer systems and getting the latest versions of softwares to run our instruments. And as I said, we're not networked, right? So our labs are set up with a one-to-one -one correlation of an instrument and a computer. But to our advantage, we do have world-class instrumentation. We like to spend a lot of money on, on getting the newest technologies, um, but we need to work better to make sure that our software and our computer systems are being updated. And then as far as our people and our culture, we're a little bit siloed. If you imagine not being in a networked environment, it can be difficult to share information. So as a result, there can be some siloing. Um, and in our department, we have a lot of diverse generations. So we have a baby boomer generation that is very, uh, likes to do things their way, which can be considered an old school way. And then we have a newer generation of, of, of millennials or whatever we're calling them now, um, who are used to having information right at their fingertips that want the best newest tools to be able to, to, to do things. But to our advantage, having a diverse generation can be good because we get a lot of different ideas and perspectives on how to improve things. And we also do have very strong technical scientists who really know what they're doing and know how to solve problems. And we have realized that we have a challenge. So we realize that we do need to improve. So Realizing you have a problem is the first step to being better. Okay, so now that we've mapped out our, our, our workflow and mapped out our environment and, and identified what the current state is, we need to identify what those bottlenecks are. So for us, we talk about data, processes, technology, and culture. So what are the bottlenecks for each one of these for us? So for us, a big bottleneck with data was a lack of connectivity, right? We're not able to capture, store, access, or use data as efficiently and as the best way that we can because we're not connected. Also, there's a lack of digitization or digitalization, right? Many of our laboratories are still paper-centric, so we need to convert those manual labs to digital labs. We also have poor data integrity. Um, because of the integrity of our data, sometimes the experimental reproducibility can be questioned, right? I'm looking back at a lab notebook from 20 years ago. How can I possibly uh, you know, repeat that experiment? Is the data that we're generating good or bad? When you have a limited data set, it might be harder to make a decision about what the data is trying to tell you. So one thing that we do need is a data scientist to be able to help us with our data analytics. Our processes, we've discussed having a lack of integration. We have multiple applications that we're using within our workflow that aren't integrated or streamlined. So it can be very frustrating. And we do have a lot of manual processes which are still paper centric. We have a lack of standardization, right? We have a diverse department where people are doing things a little bit differently. So 
we have no standardization for, for some processes. And then again, a lack of digitization, digitalization means that we're not getting access for everyone for certain processes because some of them are still manual. For technology, um, as I discussed, our labs are diverse. So we do have some that are automated and some that are still manual. We do have outdated software and hardware, as I mentioned before, with our computers and then the software that are running the instruments. We have an outdated IT infrastructure. This is getting into our networking abilities, our firewalls, our security. Um, so how can we improve our IT infrastructure to improve our connectivity? And then we also lack some digital tools. We are utilizing some, but we can definitely utilize more. As far as our culture, our bottleneck is that we have a change phobic staff. We have staff that are not really, that are a little bit reluctant to change a process and to use newer tools. We also have an issue with adaptation. The tools that we do have, we need to improve upon the utilization of those current tools. And then, as I mentioned before, we do have a diverse uh, generation with people that are used to doing things their own way and people in an old school way. And then people that want to have the latest and greatest gadget to be able to, to get the data and, get and do the work that they need to do. We're also operating in silos as a result of the lack of connectivity. And we really need to drive collaboration among, uh, among everyone in our department. So now that we've identified the bottlenecks, we need to define what our needs are. So one thing that I talked about was whether or not your organization has a strategic initiative or a digital technology or digital transformation platform. So for us, we, we do. Our organization has laid out a digital transformation plan, but what we are going to do is to focus on digital enablement. We've modified the, the objectives a little bit and we're focusing on how can we become in alignment with it. So we've identified short-term needs for us. For short-term needs, we need to improve our data flows. We really need to improve, improve lab connectivity. The days of one instrument and one computer and that, that, that computer just capturing data from one instrument is long and gone. Um, we need to really advance in this area. And what we've done is identified a proof of concept lab where we can really uh, connect, uh, connect everything. And I'll talk about that in a second. We need to standardize our procedures where we can. Um, where we can evaluate things that can be standardized. Let's do that. Centralize any databases um, that we are currently utilizing and then digitize any manual processes. We also want to improve our processes. So try to do some integration. So we're not using multiple tools at the same time. Is there something we can streamline or is there one tool that could, that could allow us to do multiple things? We need to digitize manual processes as mentioned before. And we do use some current digital softwares and digital platforms, but they're old and they haven't been reevaluated in maybe say a decade. So let's look at our current digital platforms and see if they're still operating and are we using them the same way that, the, are we using them now the way that we should? Do they need to be improved? Do they need to be updated? And then again, we can improve processes by standardizing procedures. Other short-term need is to begin our ISNT journey. ISNT is going to be a partner along this journey, so we need to begin discussions with them to give them a vision of what we want to do because we're going to really need their support in doing this. We're going to need them to improve security of our data, so we're, ins we're ensuring that there's no issues with viruses or people tapping into our network. And we need to implement small and easy ISNT infrastructure changes. So for long-term needs, we've identified long-term needs as well. We need to update our technology. We need to update outdated instrument software and computers. Right? We can't just keep continuing to use the same old software. We need to make sure that we're working with our vendors to get the latest and greatest softwares and the best computers that we can. We also need to procure additional digital tools. Uh, we have as I mentioned before, but we don't have enough. We can, we can definitely utilize more to help us improve and then work with ISNT to modernize our infrastructure in our department. We also want to, manual, to modernize our manual labs. So the laboratories where they are really manually centric, we wanna evaluate the processes specifically in those labs and see if anything can be digitized. Identify specific workflow improvements. Is there something that can be done in these labs where we can improve the workflow? And then is there anything we can do with technology or automation to improve as well? And then finally, a long-term need, even though it's a continuous need, it's a short-term need and it's a long-term need, is a cultural shift, right? It's a continuous process. 
and it it needs it means that we need to communicate our digital strategy and the advantages of the strategy to our department so that we can get adapt adaptation uh, of this platform with everyone in the department. And we also want people to utilize the tools, so we want to increase utilization of the tools that we do have. Provide everyone with training and time. When you're giving people new, new digital tools to use, they need to learn how to utilize them, which can be frustrating. So as lab leaders, we need to be able to give them the time and the flexibility to start to get trained on them and also uh, spend time to tinker around with the new software. It's also important to obtain feedback to understand what's working well and what's not working well so that we can align and readjust and also to develop a path for sustainability, right? Once we've done this digital transformation, how are we gonna ensure that it stays and it's sustained in the year's future, in, in the years coming? And then we can also extend our learnings to other departments, right? We can share what we've learned with research and development and our researchers and other laboratories to see if maybe there's some advantages that they can realize from our digital transformation journey. Okay, so now you've identified your needs. The next thing to do would be to create a strategic plan. So for us, we did that. Our strategic plan was to first form a digitization team. Um, the team's objectives would be to communicate the vision to the rest of the department and then also work with other, with other departments to get alignment. So that would be working with our information, um, our IT team, as well as our R&D management team. Then we develop a strategic plan where we're listing our projects and we're prioritizing our projects based upon our needs. Also determining the de deliverables and the timing um, and then calculating any costs and allocating any funding. So adding software, adding computers, it all costs money. So we need to be sure that we're asking for the amount of money that we need in order to do this. Then we wanna address our short-term needs, which we've talked about to improve our data flows, streamline our processes and work with IT to get these implemented. And one of the things that we did was to establish a proof of concept laboratory. Since we do work in a very diverse department, we wanted to take a laboratory where we felt that we could streamline a lot of things. And that was our gas chromatography lab where we have a lot of instruments that are the same. We're doing a lot of the same types of analyses. So we utilize this as our proof of concept lab. And that's the lab that we're focusing on completely digitally transforming. We wanna demonstrate the success and justify this process which can then be expanded to other laboratories in our department and then hopefully other laboratories within R&D. We wanna begin a culture change, which is a continuous sustainable process. So we need to implement that right away to let everybody understand the value in the digit digital transformation um, so that they can you know, get on board with it. And then next we wanna establish those longer term needs to ensure um, that the longer term needs are part of our lab strategic plans, right? When we think about next year, the next three years, the next five years, are we incorporating digital technology into that strategic plan? for the laboratory. Okay, so now we've gone through that process of laying out the framework for digital transformation, uh, evaluating the current state, defining what your needs are, creating the strategic plan. Now we've moved to implement some of those things. And as I said, we're just starting our digital transformation journey. Um, it's been about two to three years. We have had some digital tools in the past, but within the last few years and with the corporate mandates from higher up in our organization, we've realized that there's a lot more that we need to do. So we're definitely new in this realm. So where are we now? We discussed data. So data then, our environment non-networked, data is not easily shared, it's manually captured. Um, it's manually retrieved and stored, and it's poor security. So where are we now? Well, we're in a semi-networked environment. About 30% of our department has connectivity via lab networks. So what does that mean? That means that now researchers are now able to go into their office and connect into the computers in the laboratory to work on data in their office, as opposed to being in the laboratory next to the physical computer and instrument to do data processing. Our proof of concept lab, our gas chromatography lab is completely uh, connected to a server, um, to a server-based chromatography data system where we have complete remote connectivity to all of the instruments from anywhere. We can be at home and connect our instruments, work on data, start runs, stop runs, whatever we need to do. So that streamline operations in that laboratory. 
We've improved data retrieval, storage, sharing. Uh, we've done that by centralizing databases. There's been a lot of places of information where we can look. So we've tried to centralize where that information is stored so that there's one place to look. Um, and we've also networked our environment, which makes it easier to search through data. If you think of you have a laboratory, which is completely connected, I can now go search for any data that I want because it's connected, it's much easier to do. So we're using electronic lab notebooks, we're using a LIMS, uh, we're using OneDrive, SharePoint, uh, chromatography data systems, and local networks in order to do all of that. We've also improved our data capturing, our processing, and our mining. We have hired a data scientist. As we're acquiring more and more data, we need someone who is able to look at the data and make sense of it for us, tell us what is good about the data and what isn't. Um, and our data scientist is using various digital tools to be able to use that, uh, such as Jump, Pi, R, and Minitab. And then our systems team is also leveraging cloud computing to be able to have access um, to more power, more servers, uh, more, more process power to be able to do the calculations that they need to do um, from a molecular modeling standpoint. So in the future, we want to move to be more networked. We're, we're hoping for a 90 plus percent networked environment in our, in our department. We want to increase connectivity to our limbs. So we want our instruments to be completely connected to our limbs so that the limbs can capture the data from our instruments automatically. And we want to increase utilization of data analytics so that we can make smarter decisions about our data and understand what our data means. So the next part of our digital transformation journey was processes. So where we were was our processes were non-standardized, many were manual, they weren't integrated, but we did have some that were digitized to some level. So where are we now? We've standardized a lot of procedures. We've looked at what procedures we can standardize. And some of those things for us were the way that we write methods, the way that we write our standard operating procedures, the way that we write our reports. Everything should follow a certain format. We've also standardized the way that we're using our electronic lab notebooks, the information that should be put into those lab notebooks. Also, how we're utilizing the software to do the analyses. Imagine you have a laboratory of five different people using the same software. The way that they're inputting data and putting information into that software can differ. So we've standardized the way that they're using the software and where they're putting the information. We've also digitized and improved some processes. We, we've digitized some manual processes. We were using laboratory notebooks to monitor instrument maintenance and instrument preventative maintenance and issues. Now that has moved to an electronic format, the way that we uh, reconcile our purchasing cards was manual and now it's completely digital, no paper involved with it at all. Same with laboratory notebooks, the way that we're reviewing documents is all on a computer, uh, how we're doing analysis for of data analysis, our safety procedures, uh, and how we're doing our lab metrics. It's all digital now. We're also utilizing more digital tools um, as a result, and uh, we're using things like the lab notebook, our chromatography data system, uh, power apps, SharePoint, Flows, and Power BI. We're consulting with a consultant to upgrade our LIMS functionality. Our LIMS um, was, was tailored to our working environment 10, 15 years ago. And since then we haven't reevaluated the workflow in our LIMS. So we're working with a consultant to upgrade that. And we're building processes to learn how to collect different types of data. If you imagine we have some labs that are generating graphics as a tangible result, some labs that are generating numbers in tabular Excel types of format, um, so we're trying to understand how we can collect and capture all of those different data types so that we can then search through and make sense of all of this data. So in the future, we want to integrate more of our processes. How can we incorporate uh, workflows and tools into our limbs so that we can streamline our procedure so that when we're searching for uh, chemicals or when we're searching for methods, we're not going to different uh, software tools to do that. We're utilizing one platform. We also want to improve our processes. We're upgrading our LIMS functionality and we're continuing to streamline others. In our technology, where were we then? We had outdated software and hardware and our environment was not networked, but we do have really great instrumentation in our department. So where are we now? We've upgraded about 50% of our department. So 50% of our instrumentation has the latest, greatest computers and the most current versions of software that the manufacturer and the vendor provides. 
We have complete remote access in our proof of concept laboratory where we are able to run the instrumentations from the instruments from anywhere. We've created a strategic capital plan for other laboratories so that we can then use the monies to uh, upgrade software and hardware uh, in the years to come. And we've modified our capital budgets as well. We've also procured additional digitized tools. We're using laptops in the laboratory for the electronic laboratory notebook or for our limbs. We're also purchasing tablets to be able to do things a lot faster than on a laptop. Um, so right at the touch of a button on a tablet. Um, and then there are also certain apps on our iPhones that we can use to do certain tasks. We've also gotten a new chemical inventory system with scanners and printers to help the, the, the inventorying of our chemicals be a lot easier. We've also improved our ISNT infrastructure. Uh, we've determined with ISNT what the network and the network configuration and the architecture needs to be in order to do the connectivity of our instruments and to be able to have remote access. So by doing that with our proof of concept laboratory, we have done what we've learned so much that we can then apply that similar network architecture to the other labs so that we can get our other laboratories connected as well. We've also improved firewall rules and security to ensure that we have, uh, you know, good data integrity and good data security. So in the future, we wanna to continue to update our instrument software and hardware, um, you know, upgrade the additional labs that need that and also look into remote connectivity for additional laboratories. We want to continue our ISNT improvements with our connected laboratories, continue that connectivity, and then also learn to hammer out the kinks. Because once you do start to connect and you have to deal with firewalls and you get on your business network, you might have some is issues with connectivity and losing connectivity. So we want to hammer out any of those kinks to understand where the problems are. We also want to procure additional tools. Where are there are laboratories that are really manual, are there additional tools that we can buy to help automate um, some of those manual processes, or is there software that we can buy in order to do that? So culture. Then our culture was siloed, non-networked, and we had a diverse generation that had different expectations about digital transformation and the tools that they're using to do their work. Um, we have a strong technical staff, a positive was that we have diverse generations and we do identify that we need to improve. So where are we now? We're providing training on our new tools and our new processes to our department so they can start to learn how to utilize these tools. And we're helping them understand how to adapt to change and try to see that change is actually a good thing. And there are positives to this change to not always think of change as a negative thing. We're also trying to create a culture shift. We're creating engaged teams. So part of this digitized effort was to get people from the department on board to help have input and be part of the decision-making process to understand what was important to them and the changes that they really wanted to see being made. We're working with our younger staff to see uh, how, what, what ideas do they have? Um, what tools are they using at home that we might be able to utilize in the laboratory? Um, and what ideas do they have? What have they learned from other organizations too that they may have worked for? And then we wanna ex extending our learnings to other groups within our organization um, where we're sharing our learnings and sharing what we're gaining with others so that they can help learn from us and implement additional changes and start their digital transformation journey as well. So where do we need to be in the future? We need to continue to communicate and educate. It's very important that we keep all of these changes and all of the things that we're doing, uh, keep it transparent to everyone in our department and continue to educate them on what we are doing so they understand the advantages and they know it's going to be coming. So learnings and consideration. For us, the biggest thing has been connectivity, improving connectivity, um, improving standardization, improving integration, and modernizing our lab and our infrastructure. And so by doing all of these things, and even just from the little things that we have done, we have seen some improvements. So what we've been able to realize is that we're in greater alignment with our corporate strategy, right? We're, we're able to, to see what the corporation wants to do, and we're meeting, we're meeting those needs, and we're gaining uh, advantages with that. Improved data integrity, we know that our data is much more secure than what it used to be as a result of the changes that we've made. We have increased speed to address customer needs because we're getting some data a lot faster and we have more access to the data. We can now answer questions a lot faster and we can share data with customers a lot faster. 
It's also helped us increase our collaborations. It's much easier to share our data with people, with people now, even if we're having trouble. We don't have to worry about going into the laboratory, downloading the data, moving it to another computer, right? We just have to do a couple of clicks and we're able to show someone at home what our data is and what it needs. And it's also a better working environment. Once you're streamlining and making things easier for people in the laboratory, they're much happier at work, they're much more productive at work. I think we've created a better working environment as a result of these changes. So some learnings and considerations. Digital transformation must be part of a strategic plan. In order to really do this, you need to set up a strategic plan and really outline all of the things that you want to do, just as I've kind of demonstrated to it can't just be done in a vacuum and avoid. It really needs to be a thought out process. Don't be afraid to start small. We have done a lot of small changes at Arkema. Um, and for us, they're huge because uh, they've really had a great impact for us. So don't think that just because something is small, it's not going to be impactful, that your digital transformation must be you know, this great, huge thing. Even a small change can mean a lot to people in the laboratory. So don't be afraid to start small. Be patient. The transformation takes a lot of time. It's a lot of small incremental uh, advances, so be very patient. And know that IST is going to be your best friend. Really get to know your IST colleagues uh, because they're going to be speaking a language that you might not understand. So it's good to have a great working relationship with them so they can help explain things to you to make sense of networks and firewalls and servers and SQL servers and all these additional things that scientists don't have to, have to worry about. Create teams. It's important to create teams along your digital transformation journey to get the input from them about the things that they feel are the most important. As laboratory managers, we can be a little bit disconnected from workflows and work processes, so you really need them in order to make changes and understand what's going on. Branch out and network. Um, for us at Arkema, there were a lot of learnings that were realized from talking to people in our manufacturing organization because they've kind of done this digital transformation journey already. So by talking to them and learning about what they've done, we've gained a lot of insight. And now, as well as our understanding, we're working with other analytical groups throughout our organization to share our learnings with them. So don't be afraid to branch out and network. Plan, plan, plan. <laughs> this is part of your strategic plan, right? But over planning here can never be a bad thing um, because there's just so many moving parts to a digital transformation. Planning is key. And communicate, communicate, communicate. Communicating to your teams, communicating to your department, communicating your strategy higher up to your management, uh, communicating your strategy to ISNT. Communication is key so everyone understands what it is that you want to do and you understand how you're going to do it. Perform beta tests. If you're incorporating new software tools, new digital tools, or new processes, test them out, work out the kinks, see what works, see what doesn't work. And don't be afraid to get feedback about what's working and what's not working. Really listen to, to everybody working in the lab to get their feedback about what they think is a valuable change, what is a good change, and what's maybe not a not necessary change. And then once you've gotten that feedback, don't be afraid to realign, right? You may have thought that your plan should have been this, but then after implementing it and running it through, you might get feedback that it didn't work as well as you thought and that maybe you need to do something else. So you might need to realign some level of your strategic plan. So don't be afraid to do that. And allow everyone the training and the time that they will need in order to, to be able to implement and use these digital tools. It can be frustrating to have a completely new software platform or to use, a, you know, to use something new and to be able to incorporate it into your workflow. So allow the scientists in the laboratory to have the time to get accustomed and to get used to using the digital tools and the processes and the technology. Okay, so that is the end of my talk. I want to give some shout outs and some acknowledgements to a lot of people. This is a team effort here. Um, so first, I'd like to thank the leadership in my department, my boss, the director of our department, Dr. Les McIntosh, as well as our admin, Nicole Picaretta, who is wonderful with all things digital. Also, our digital, digital, digitalization team in our department, we have a diverse group of scientists and chemists that are working uh, with us to help identify room for improvement and help us work towards implementing those changes. Our ISNT infrastructure, they've been key here as well. Um, so our ISNT director and engineer, as well as our consultant that we use for some of our software platforms. And then also our vendors, Agilent, who we are using um, for our chromatography data system, and as well as Thermo Fisher for our, for our limbs and some other softwares that we use for connectivity. 
So with that, I will allow and open up for any questions that anyone might have. We have five minutes left, so I guess I went long. <laughs> Christy, no, thank you. That was a wonderful presentation. So yeah, we, we have time for a couple questions. So the first question, Christy, that we got was, what will be the impact of digitalization on staffing numbers and the ability to work at home? So for us, um, there, there is, I don't think there will be any impact in numbers. I think we're, allow, we're allowing more people to work from home, right? Not, not just as a result of digitalization, but also as a result of COVID. Um, we have shown that we can implement these digital changes and we can show that we can also work from home. So we are currently allowing a level of flexibility as a result of this, but we still have a long way to go, right? Because only certain parts of our department are digital, um, digitized, digitally transformed. So we still have a little bit more to go. So some people might be working from home a little bit more because they have digitalized and some people might still be in the laboratory more. But moving forward, I don't see um, our staff being completely remote, right? They still need to be in the laboratory to install a column or put a sample in, right? They still need to be in the lab. Right. Well, thanks for that one. Yeah, another question we got was, what's the timeline been like for your transformation so far? That, that was something I'd thought about time. You know, you, you have your case study. What, how, how long, you know, what, what does these things take? So for us, we, we've just started. So the changes that we have made have been realized over the last year or two years, and we still have a long way to go. We've been utilizing electronic lab notebooks and limbs for a very long time. But now for us, it's really looking at the whole process of our department and the way that our whole entire department works, right? Not just, okay, I'm going to now use an electronic lab notebook. It's not just about that, right? It's about so much more. So really a holistic, integrated approach to complete digital, digital transformation if that makes sense yeah yeah great 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 so uh, the last question so how often should we think about digital transformation you know it, like a uh, five years ten years i mean what what are your thoughts on you know the frequency of thinking through these these processes yes. so you know, every department every lab has a strategic plan right hopefully every year you're going over what the needs are for for, for your for your department and for your laboratory digital transformation should be a part of that strategic plan moving forward it shouldn't just be something that's done and then is forgotten about it should be something that's constantly reassessed and part of the overall operations of your organization because it's vital to providing uh, you know, good workflows, good processes for, for all of the advantages that we've discussed, right? It really needs to be part of that foundation of your operations. Okay. Well, thanks, Christy. That, that, that's, that was a great talk. So this brings us to the end of our third webinar in the Alma 2021 Continuing Your Leadership Journey virtual program. We'd like to remind you that this webinar will be available to view later and details will be on our website at the time. On behalf of Alma, we would like to thank Christy Bowden for presenting today. Thanks again to Rob Patterson from Asterix for joining us today. We'd also like to thank the audience for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. For more information on our upcoming webinars, please visit the Alma website, labmanagers.org. And please join us on October 15th for our fourth virtual program event, where Sherry Petro will present on the 10 tips to better collaboration through improved communication. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.